Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to Slovakia for presiding this session today. Dear colleagues, it's good to see you all. And on behalf of Canada, I'd like to thank our Albanian friends, including the chairperson, Rama, uh, for hosting us today. And also for the incoming chair, our dear friends from Sweden. As most of you, I would have loved to visit your country and see you all in person, but I'm glad we were able to meet today to discuss very important issues. As many have said before me, this meeting take place at a challenging time for the OSCE. Human rights abuses, instability, and serious geopolitical conflicts are taking place right when we need most to work together to recover from the pandemic and find solutions to the complex challenges we all face. One week from today, we will mark the Human Rights Day, the anniversary of the UN General Assembly adoption of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Canada's commitment to basic human rights and democracy is a cornerstone of our foreign policy, notably in promoting and protecting gender equality, all night freedoms, civil society, diversity, and obviously inclusion. Unfortunately, I would say dear colleagues, we are seeing these fundamental principles being threatened. That's why the leadership of the OSC is so crucially important and we will continue to support the work that has started on the human rights front. On Ukraine, as we gather, we mark yet another year since Russia's invasion of Ukraine and attempted annexation of Ukrainian territory. This act remains an egregious violation of international law. Canada stands with Ukraine and supports its sovereignty and dependence and territorial integrity. And we condemn Russia's action both in Crimea and in the Donbass. Canada supports diplomatic efforts to peacefully resolve the conflict in Eastern Ukraine. That includes within the Normandy Four framework and the trilateral contact group. Now let me say a few words on Belarus and I saw the intervention from our colleague before. Canada also strongly believes that Alexander Lukashenko does lack the legitimacy to be the leader of Belarus. We continue to advocate for the implementation of the recommendations in the Moscow Mechanism Report, including the release of those who are arbitrarily detained, meaningful dialogue between the authorities and the opposition towards a peaceful resolution, and the end to the violence which has been committed by the authorities and it's, which is well documented. And I want to take also the opportunity to salute all these brave women uh, that we've seen weekend after weekend, days after days, uh, stepping up and standing up to uh, the authorities to ask for democracy, freedom, and liberty. Canada supports the people of Belarus, as we have always done and we will always do. We will not remain silent in the face of violence and acts that undermine democracy. On Nagorno-Karabakh, we believe the involvement of the OSC and the Minsk Group is essential to bringing the conflict to a lasting peaceful resolution. We will continue to support the work of the Minsk Group and we will follow the process like many, many of you very, very carefully. We must all work together to ensure civilians receive the humanitarian support they need and that their rights and security are respected, including the right of the displaced to return home. We expect the OSCE to play a key role in this regard and Canada will always be willing to help. Now let me touch Madam Chair on arms control. Also Canada remains committed to the conventional arms control framework that we have established in Europe. However, Russia's unwillingness to fully implement its commitments continues to undermine Europe's confidence and the security building efforts that have been undertaken. In conclusion, Madam Chair, I wish to reaffirm our commitment to working with all of you to strengthen human rights and bring about peace and security for all 
during one of the most challenging time of our generation. Let's all remember that stability and security are essential to ensure prosperity for everyone within our organization. With that, Madam Chair, I turn over the floor to you.